Well, a very good afternoon live from the valley. Uh, this is Ben Fisher here. We're awaiting the arrival of Jack Adams, who's uh, just been at a game. He will be joining us shortly. But welcome. It's the Reading Rockets versus the Thames Valley Cavaliers in NBL Division 1. Uh, the Rockets had a very good win last night as they beat London Elite. 72 points to 66. The first of a double header and the first of seven home games to finish the season for the Rockets. So plenty of basketball action coming your way this month. March Madness, as we've called it. And we are just being introduced to the two teams. So I will introduce to you the Thames Valley Cavaliers, who are currently sitting in 11th place in NBL Division 1 with six wins and 13 losses. Still fighting for a playoff spot, only two games behind the Nottingham Hoods. And if I introduce them, they are as follows. Number four is AJ Roberts. Five and captain is Bode Adalola. Six is Ibrahim Jafaru. Number 10, Kamari Hunter. 11, Omanitin Afrikanov. Wearing 12 is Timmy Tolo Ogunkoya. 20, Mergim Sokoli. 22, Igor Stokic. 24, Shaq Lewis. And number 30, Deji Adekunle. And Robert Banks is the head coach of the Thames Valley Cavaliers. And his assistant is Kelson Dixon. And you'll probably hear the booms of Bailey Tustin as the Rockets faithful get ready for the introduction of their roster and wearing number four is Mitch Clark for the Rockets in five is Reese Pinnock six is Jemiah Jenkins seven and captain is Lewis Champion eight Elijah Maynard nine is Isaac Round ten Harry Milbank eleven Jacob Spurrier 13 is Finn Porter, but he is not active today. He is out injured. 14 is Zach Powell, and 15 is Christian Alexander. And uh, this should be quite an intense matchup. The uh, the reverse fixture was only a 10-point game with the Rockets winning that contest by 93 points to 83 in Uxbridge. And some players to watch out for this evening, none other than the veteran, the 34-year-old Bode Adalola, he's done it all in Division 1. He's currently averaging 21.4 points per game. He's shooting 40% from beyond the arc. And he's going to be a real threat to the Rockets. And also AJ Roberts, who has a wealth of experience also in the BBL as well. He's averaging 15.7 points per game with almost four rebounds and five assists. Those two, the big hitters in terms of minutes as well with 36 and 31 respectively. Uh, Shaq Lewis has also been a real impact for the Thames Valley Cavaliers so far this season. He's averaging 13 points per game. And uh, Igor Stokic is also averaging 13.8 points per game. For the Rockets, they've got quite a few players in double digits. Mitch Clark is leading the way with 17.3 points per game himself. And then we've got uh, a number of players. Jemiah Jenkins, Lewis Champion, Elijah Maynard, Finn Porter and Zach Powell. All, all around the 10, 10 or 11 points per game mark so Rockets kind of sharing the scoring and it'd be interesting to see how they get on against this Thames Valley Cavaliers team let me give you um, some stats from the previous games both teams winning three of their last five games the Rockets are going win loss win loss and last night's win they recently lost to the Essex Rebels by 87 points to 68 uh, they were victorious last time out at the Valley when they defeated the Nottingham Hoods 85-77. They lost out to the Derby Trailblazers on a Thursday night clash, uh, but they were victorious over the Loughborough Riders, so they've um, three out of the last five, and they currently sit in fourth place, level with Newcastle University, with 12 wins and six losses to their name, keeping up the heat in the top four, as I'm sure that's what Coach Nurazade and his team will be looking for. Just a quick check on the officials. So Tahir Akar, Bence Sragi and Daniel Cox are your three officials on the court. And Peter Dubb, Kieran Schotter and Alison Squire are on the table. So going to the Thames Valley Cavaliers. They recently, uh, as recently as yesterday, sorry, fell to the Hemel Storm who have significantly bolstered their roster for this latter part of the season. They lost out 94-65. But 
that they did record a 15-point victory over London Elite and only lost at Essex Rebels by five points, 75-80. Uh, prior to that, they had two wins over the City of Birmingham Rockets by 104 points to 100 and Nottingham Hoods by 90 points to 84. So they're certainly finding form in the second part of this season and will be a really dangerous team. There's no question about that. We are just under two minutes to tip. As I say, Jack Adams will be joining myself uh, shortly as we prepare for this NBL Division 1 live clash. Earlier on today, the M WNBL Division 1 women were victorious over the Solon Kestrels. They won by 72 points to 71. It was a really pulsating game right the way through. They've just managed to scrape the win there and keep themselves in pretty good contention. They currently have seven wins and seven losses and currently occupy the eighth place spot but are a couple of games behind the teams ahead of them who have played significantly more games. And as we get ready for the start of this one, let me give you tonight's starting fives. Uh, TVC are going to be lining up with number four, AJ Roberts, number five, Bode Adalola, 10, Kamari Hunter, 22, I Igor Stokic, and number 30, J Deji Adakunle. The Rockets will go with number four, Mitch Clark, Five, Reese Pinnock. Seven, Lewis Champion. Eight, Elijah Maynard. And 15, Christian Alexander. Tough outing last night in terms of the interior side of things for the Rockets without Finn Porter, who's suffered a knee injury. He is awaiting an MRI scan next week to see if there is any significant uh, damage to that. But that is leaving uh, the Rockets a little bit short on the interior. So... It'll be an interesting matchup, certainly this evening between uh, Shaq Lewis when he start, when he plays, sorry, and Christian Alexander. At the moment, Deji Adekunle, I would imagine, will match up against him as we uh, we look at Coach Nurazade just giving final instructions to his team, and we are just about ready for tip-off here at the Valley. It was the Mead, the the return of the Mead last night who hosted the Rockets but we are back to the Valley and we have got a brilliant march of basketball ahead of us with another five games here before the end of the season heading into the postseason a reminder finishing in the top four and that gives you a home court advantage in the playoff quarterfinals so I know that's something the Rockets will be certainly looking towards as both teams are now on the floor, the crowd is ready. The officials just making sure everything is in order before the start of the game. And we are ready. And it is Reese Pinnock who gets the ball from the tip off from Christian Alexander. Rockets with the first possession of the game. So Clark will go inside to. Alexander, Alexander looks to play, double teamed, will pass out to champion to Clark, Clark for three, and that's beautiful offence from the Rockets to get us going in this one with the three ball. So TBC with their first possession of the game, a high screen and roll, cross screen to down screen, AJ Roberts looks inside and that's a thought was an easy one but offensive rebound as Adalola fires the three he's off and champion will collect the rebound for the Rockets champion gets the ball back cross screen down screen combination as Clark pitches to Pinnock with the shot clock winding down Pinnock looks to attack the big inside Pinnock with footwork can't get it to go and rebound is with Stokic who looking to go coast to coast and indeed does but misses. Rebound is good, but Adekunle can't get that one to go, but TVC keep it alive. AJ Roberts from way downtown is off on that one. And he's definitely a danger from the perimeter. There's no question about that. AJ Roberts doing a fantastic job in Division 1 as Maynard fires the three ball and he connects. Elijah Maynard and an early timeout has been called by the Thames Valley Cavaliers head coach Robert Banks. Two threes for the Rockets as they lead this one 
and normally as I'd, I would hand over to Jack Adams but he's still in transit uh, yet there's a blank seat next to me so you'll have to put up with my dulcet tones um, and of course the miracle that happened yesterday with both the Reading Rockets and my football team QPR winning the biggest surprise being the QPR win away at Leicester City so I couldn't not come on and mention that I'm sure I'll get abuse for that that's absolutely fine remember uh, probably less abuse but if you do want to comment on the game or anything you see do do put any uh, messages in the comments or on YouTube It'd be great to hear from you it's always great to to know who's watching um, we always get some some great feedback so that's always very very much appreciated um, not the not the busiest crowd here at uh, the valley today a lot of basketball coming up so uh, I'm sure the Rockets faithful will be out in full force as we get restarted with eight and a half minutes still remaining in this first quarter uh, Rockets with a little bit of full court pressure which is negated pretty well by the Cavaliers so hand off to pick and roll quite a common action in basketball as Roberts goes all the way to the rack for two and that will not please coach Nurizares I know they do a lot of work on that in practice defending that particular scenario and out of bounds is the call so as it stands it looks like it's been a good timeout from coach Banks Adalola will go to the rim against Alexander can't get it to go but another offensive rebound and the pull-up J is off but another offensive rebound and two points is good for Deji Adekunle and that's certainly going to be a tough night if the Rockets continue to give up that amount of offensive boards so Pinnock will play with Champion who will fire the three and he connects Lewis Champion looks like he's feeling it today three threes for the Rockets good start shooting wise seven minutes 20 remaining in this first quarter but a Kunle goes to Stokic Stokic had a Lola thought about it but will drive Adalola stops and pops, can't get it to go. And Champion recovers from out of bounds to get the rebound. That was much needed for the Rockets. And it's going to be a foul on the play. Tough pass by Champion, who then went for the loose ball but ended up fouling. That's the first foul of the game. No JC with that one. So TVC down five seven just under seven minutes remaining in this first quarter and Alola gives it to have a AJ Roberts now Roberts passes inside that's a great look from AJ Roberts inside to add a Kunle for two and it's a three-point deficit now as Pinnock looks to play in transition Clark hands off to Maynard Maynard with the pick and roll with Alexander Alexander feeds to Pinnock I'm not quite sure why Rockets keep the ball alive and Maynard stops and pops and that's a great foul line jumper and good patience from the Rockets although Alexander looked like he had lots of time inside 11 plays six six minutes remaining in this first quarter and, and TVC looking to play high low there draws a foul from Alexander that's number one for him and the Rockets as I said to you before a bit shy of coverage on the interior so it's going to be a, a tough matchup for them Stokic with the ball to Hunter Hunter looking to play against Pinnock AJ Roberts this is where he's really good time winding down Adalola is out of bounds and that will be a turnover for TVC Welcome, we are just under the half century of people watching. Welcome if you're just joining us. NBL Division 1 action between Reading Rockets and the Thames Valley Cavaliers. And it's Rockets with a five-point advantage, 11 play six. Rockets playing their pick-and-roll continuity offence. Pinnock fancies the three ball and he connects. Well, it's a great shooting performance so far from the Rockets. Reese Pinnock 
gives the Rockets an eight-point advantage. Hunter looks to play inside again. The high-low taken away this time. So good defence by the Rockets, good help by Maynard on the interior. Maynard will fire the three. Bingo! Elijah Maynard lighting it up from beyond the arc and the Rockets lead by 11. Rockets definitely got their shooting boots on this evening and they definitely did not have last night. AJ Roberts. Stokic will fire the three ball. He can't connect. And the Rockets will get it. It's champion. Driving against Adelola, dishes off to Alexander. Alexander can't get it to go. So Mitch Clark will get it. Ten seconds on the shot clock. High screen and roll. Clark to Maynard. He's off this time. Transition for the TVC. And AJ Roberts lays it in for two. Rockets moving the ball pretty well so far. Clark to Champion. Champion thought about the three. Ball inside to Alexander. Alexander looks to play. And Alexander gets it to go. And that's what the Rockets have been looking for to start this game. Christian Alexander, a force inside. Stokic throws it back to AJ Roberts, who fires the three, finds the back of the iron. It's another offensive rebound. Adelola thought about it. Adelola in traffic. Gets it to go and a foul is called on the play as well. And that's the wily veteran I was talking about, Bode Adelola. So good at creating his own shot. And we've got a couple of changes. Afrikanov is into the game for TVC. I'm just waiting for... Ogun Koya just to pop his shot on so we know which number he is. The Rockets are also going to make a change and they're going to make a triple change. It's uh, Jenkins, Powell and Round into the game. Um, but we've got one free throw to come for Bode Adalola. And that was in fact his first points of the game. And this is to make it a three point play. Which indeed he does. 19 plays 11. Jenkins to Powell to Maynard. Round. Round all the way to the rack. Can't get it to go. Alexander bounced it and lost it. And I think it's an out of bounds call in favour of the Rockets. Alexander at the rim, gets it to go for two. 21 plays, 11, a 10-point advantage for the Rockets. Rockets with a change of defence. Got a match-up zone as Roberts drives with contact and gets it to go. And AJ Roberts is also tough at the rim for two. 20. T1 plays 13. Jenkins. Stops and pops for three. Go under or against Jemai Jenkins and that's what you can suffer. The Rockets with another three ball. They really have shot the lights out in this opening quarter. 24 plays 13. Adalola fires the three and he connects. And 40 points scored already in this first quarter with just over two minutes remaining. Alexander is inside. And an offensive foul is called. And that will be foul number two for Alexander. So that forces coach Nurizade into a change. And coach Nurizade rolling the dice has put in young academy star Jacob Spurrier into the game. Spurrier only averaging 1.7 minutes per game. 
but he's going to be in the thick of it and he's going to have to defend Shaq Lewis and that's a, that's a match up right there so Clark defending the four spot by the looks of things lob pass inside is good and Ogun Koya lays it in for two 24 plays 18 TVC have chipped away at this one Powell to Jenkins that's high screen and roll now with Clark Clark all the way to the rack for two and that's a massive one from Mitch Clark he gets it to go and great news everybody Mr Jack Adams has just arrived and will be joining me on comms imminently and I'm very much looking forward to uh, hearing his dulcet tones rather than just mine the drive is turned over the Rockets have possession just under a minute remaining in this first quarter Jenkins thought about it but he's instead he's going to play against the mismatch Jenkins for three he's just off with Adalola rebounding Adalola coming down the court Shaq Lewis will play screen and roll with Adalola Adalola stops and pops over round but doesn't get it to go round doesn't rebound and it's another offensive rebound for TVC Lewis with a step back three my goodness me he makes it that's a big shot and 26 plays 21 and we're into the final possession of this first quarter excuse me Mr Adams is preparing himself seven seconds remaining Clark going against Lewis Clark pulls the trigger Bang! the Aussie sensation for three and he will rack up the 29th point of this first quarter as the Rockets lead by eight 29 21 and another high scoring affair here at the Valley and now time to welcome Mr Adams welcome how are you good thank you how was your game competitive we won by five or six excellent top of my head, so yeah well done good win apologies for your game tipping off late due to my game that's fine late this is not a thing we enjoy it's not anyway you have joined us jack um and it's been a it's been a lively affair the rockets are, are shooting the lights out if if i'm totally honest with you um so far they have made as I just get the statistics ready they're six from eight from the three-point line so they're shooting 75 percent and the statistician chucks it at us you can have that one thank you um, but the Rockets are suffering on the offensive glass they've already given up seven offensive rebounds there ten to five down on the rebound count that will probably be the thing that concerns coach Nurizali the most and also with Christian Alexander on out the game currently on two fouls so Jacob Spurrier played the last um, couple of minutes there. So, great recap for me and anyone else that joined us later. Absolutely, and if you have just joined us, a big welcome to the Valley. Rockets are with Mitch Clark, Flip Jenkins, Zach Power, Elijah Maynard and Isaac Round. And AJ Roberts, Bode Adalola, the Bode Adalola, the excellent combo for TBC are with Shaq Lewis. Timmy Ogun Koya and Amin Afrikanov. So TBC have the first possession of this second quarter, trailing the Rockets by eight. Looks to go back door, but Maynard was there to stop, and Rockets playing in transition with Clark and Powell, and Clark has it back. Maynard. Rockets looking to move the ball pretty well, but they turn it over with Flip Jenkins. Clark, good stand, but he's called for the foul. And that will be foul number one for Mitch Clark, with Shaq Lewis going to the line for two. Very eventful start to the second quarter. I say start, but start for me. Well, yeah, you missed the first quarter. Couldn't be bothered, so... <laughs> anyway, Shaq Lewis on the line for two, makes the first. As long as you've left JMA tidy, that's all I'm worried about. And if you haven't, you'll be going back there after the game. It's fine. I, I would say it's tidy, but I don't know if it meets your high standards. That's the issue. <laughs> Lewis, two for two. 29 plays, 23. 
Round open drives. Round off the window for two. Isaac Round getting off the mark. Great to see. Yeah, just a miscommunication there from Thames Valley. Nobody in help side to slow the ball um, as Isaac Round gets a wide open layup. Turnover again by TVC. That could have been a double dribble there or, or travel, travel yeah. some description. Anyway, the Rockets have got away with that one. Maynard reverses the ball to Powell. Powell gives it to Clark. Clark's open, likes to look at that one, doesn't go. Ogun Koya rebounds for TVC. Yeah, interesting lineup out there at the moment for the Rockets. Obviously, very small with no Finn Porter today and Christian Alexander on two fouls, as Ben told you a minute ago. Shaq Lewis gets it to go for two. Mitch Clark def having to defend the interior. Zach Powell with a very early three. Not quite sure Coach Nurizade will enjoy that one particularly. Very scrappy in the midcourt. But Adalola loves that stop and pop from the foul line. Doesn't get it to go. Almost gets his own rebound. The guy is just everywhere. Powell thinks not to shoot the three this time. Yeah, better decision that time from Zach. Jenkins screen and roll. Back to Powell. Nothing inside for the Rockets. So Powell will play one against one. Gets bumped on the drive and that will be a Rockets ball from the baseline. Yeah, that's better from Zach. Better patience in transition and then attacking his defender. That's where he's great, getting downhill. Mitch Clark leading his team with eight points personal, as does Elijah Maynard. As Jenkins to Clark. Clark reverses to Maynard, who is off on that three ball. AJ Roberts with the rebound. Him and Adalola with six points apiece. Shaq Lewis with seven. And the lob pass inside doesn't go. And it seems that with uh, Igor Stokic out, um, the Thames Valley Cavaliers finding it a little bit difficult to get the ball inside. A timeout has been called. I did not see whose timeout that was. I believe it was the Rockets, I believe. So the Rockets with a 31-25 advantage. Um, now we're going to put you on the spot. Yep because I know you'll have done extensive research into this game whilst you were watching episodes of The Chase. Um, you love The Chase. Yeah, I love The Chase. <laughs> there are other programmes available to watch. So As long as it's got Bradley Walsh hosting it, he's great. Or Gladiators. We'll yes. talk about that in a minute. Uh, for all you slightly older folk, it's, it's come back and you're just reliving your childhood like I, I am, thinking that I was Wolfman back in the day <laughs> and climbing the wall. Anyway, um, the Thames Valley Cavaliers sitting 6 and 13 in the league. Got, a lot of, got quite a bit of talent on their roster. Um, what do you think are, are going to be the main points in this particular game that they're going to need to do to overcome the Rockets? I think, I think they're going to have to really attack the basket, um, whether that's with a pass inside to a post player or the traditional way of attacking a, a, attacking a closeout, trying to get in foul trouble, um, especially with the Rockets only having one... Um, big man for them today. I think that's going to be an important one. So, yeah, I think it looks like coach uh, Robert Banks is getting ready to put uh, Deji Adekunle back into the game, which I think might help them with a bit of size interior. With yes. Someone that's got a lot of experience. Sorry, Ben. No, absolutely. That's uh, some really good points there as uh, Jenkins brings the ball up the floor. Rockets with their handoff, pick and roll, down screen. Clark goes to Powell. Powell off the bounce. And that's going to be a turnover because it'll be backcourt, I believe. And it is indeed. And that's, that's a tough one. And, and that's probably where Zach Powell needs to just be a little bit more composed with the ball. Um, passing off the dribble is obviously quicker, but sometimes you just need to stop to ensure you find the next guy. Yeah, one of my pet peeves as a coach is jump passes and passing off the dribble. I think old-fashioned, get to two feet, pivot, pass. Well, yes, old-fashioned, that is you for sure, as Adalola is looking to go inside because there's a mismatch, but Adalola gets to the foul line, stops and pops, and I tell you what, I don't think there's anybody better in the league that uh, shoots that shot better than Bode Adalola. 31 plays 27, the Cavaliers have closed the gap. Clark all the way to the rack, but he misses. Uncharacteristic miss as Ogun Koya got the rebound and uh, the Cavaliers with a chance to reduce the arrears to one but the three-point attempt is missed as Maynard rebounds 
Powell, great change of speed, but can't get it to go at the rim. And AJ Roberts against Jenkins. And a foul is called on the play. AJ Roberts will go to the line for two. And uh, I think the Thames Valley Cavaliers will definitely be the, the happier of the two teams coming out of that Rockets timeout, Jack. Yeah, definitely. I think a couple of good looks from Rockets in terms of a Mitch Clark open layup, a Zach Powell open layup, but both missed. So I don't think Coach Samet can be too upset with those offences. And the one a couple of possessions ago where Eli got a wide open free. Again, a shot you want, but at the moment, stuff just not falling. So I guess maybe stuff um, fortunes changing from the first quarter from what I've heard in terms of shooting yes indeed AJ Roberts goes one from two and now we're at 31 28 so Rockets with a quite a small lineup on the floor Rockets having a few issues as the shot clock winds down it's champion who will stop and pop for three my goodness me LJC with a great three ball there. Yeah, really, really tough shot. Defender in his face, great defense, but just a better shot. Lewis goes off the window, no good, but it's another offensive rebound, and Deji Adekunle will go to the line for two. So here's, talk, as we were talking about gladiators, yep. let's put it out there, and, and anybody watching the game back, this is going to be great, right? <laughs> Who would the Reading Rockets players be gladiator wise Ooh. that's a good one isn't it is very now good. you can choose the old ones and I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm a jet lightning shadow wolf type of guy right but you can also go for the new ones okay such as legend yeah uh, giant giant He's, he is a he giant, is giant. Yeah. He is Christian As, Christian Alexander yes but, well that's, that's a <laughs> I mean he will be thrilled with this comparison he will so yeah, give us your thoughts on that if you've got any thoughts. Uh, it's had a Kunle misses both free throws, but I think a foul is called on the play. And yeah, Rockets have fouled. It looks like Zach Powell makes that foul, and Jacob Spurry is going to have another trip into the game. Rockets really struggling with the interior and the offensive rebound at the moment. We've talked about Gladiators, there's 71 people now watching. Very warm welcome to you all. Lewis gets it, to, gets the easy one to go inside and it's 34-30. And this is going to be an interesting period for the Rockets here as they were a little bit undermanned in terms of the interior. Yeah, this is a great experience for Jacob Spurrier, someone who's from Plymouth and has grown up watching Deji play for the Patriots. Round off the window for two. Sorry, Jack, just fumbled the ball, picked it up, drove to the rim. Looks like he's got a heavy knock, but he managed to convert for two. Great play by the 19-year-old. Adalola for three. He misses, but a foul is called. Sorry, a technical foul has been called. I believe on Lewis Champion. Okay. Uh, not entirely sure what that's for. Yeah, that one possibly, was... Um, possibly when Adelaide was shooting, he might have said something. Maybe. Um, but yeah, that one was on Lewis because that makes it his third personal foul. Yeah, certainly not ideal for the Rockets as Champion has shot the ball relatively well so far this game. So... Uh, Adalola converts the free throw and Flip Jenkins will come into the game for him. So with Alexander sitting down on two and Lewis Champion on three, it's going to be a very interesting second part of this second quarter. 36 plays 31, Rockets with possession. So I'm just looking at Coach Samet speaking to the referee about the tech and um, it seems to be that Lewis Champion clapped in Bode Adalola's face as he shot the free. I'm <laughs> sure, sure Bode would have enjoyed that immensely. And now it looks like the referees are discussing who had possession at the time of the technical foul. And they're saying it's a jump ball, which is Rockets ball. Yes, I think the technical foul was called whilst the ball was in the air. So I think the right call has uh, eventually has come out. And it's good to see the officials actually talking to yeah. each other to make that. 
So Round and Spurrier. Maynard. Jenkins going to have to shoot well in this second quarter. And that's a foul on the uh, short show there from Deji Adokunle. It's his first personal foul. Rockets ball from the sideline. Incidentally, Jack, Rockets also in the penalty uh, with five, just over five minutes remaining. So, yeah, it's uh, going to be an interesting one for sure. Anyway, Jenkins turns the ball over on the drive. And Lewis also does the same. So Rockets get away with that one. Yeah, with Rockets being in team fouls, it'll be interesting to see if Coach Savage changes anything on the defensive end. Does he, does he show zone for a couple of minutes just to try and save a couple of fouls? Or does he stick with man-to-man? -man? Igor Stokic is looking ready to come back into the game as Pinnock's in for the Rockets. Shot clock winded down, Maynard with the turnaround jumper is good and that is a really tough shot from Elijah Maynard. Yeah, fading away to the right as a left hand is definitely a tough shot but clearly got the skill to make it. Oh, that's an offensive foul I'm sure. Great job by Reese Pinnock who got his chest in the way of AJ Roberts. Indeed, Igor Stokic is coming back into the game. That's foul number two on AJ Roberts. Rockets ball with a seven-point advantage. Looking pretty, pretty solid at the moment. Spurrier to Pinnock. Maynard to round. Rockets doing a good job reversing the ball, changing the side, having to make the defence work as Jenkins is way off and probably didn't need to shoot that one. Almost steals the ball with three seconds to get it over the timeline for the Thames Valley Cavaliers. They have the ball on the baseline. So will the Rockets be aware of this is the question. Interestingly, Coach Samuel uh, Rosado is telling them to go back and play half court. Yeah, and that has not worked out well for the Rockets as Adalola gets all the way to the rim for two and the foul. And the foul this time is charged on Jacob Spurrier. So Adalola currently with 11 points in the game. This to make it 12, which indeed he does. And the arrears are reduced to five. Bailey Boom shouting, let's go Rockets, let's go to the home faithful. Two EABL Academy players on the court for the Rockets. And Spurrier looks to play. And deflected out of bounds. And that was a CBL player for Thames Valley getting a defector on the ball. Excellent knowledge there from you. Timmy Ogunkoya comes back into the game. Zach Powell will also check back in for the Rockets. He's going to come in for Isaac Round, who's had a pretty decent spell out there for sure. Round with four points. So, shot clock winding down, Pinnock downhill, can't get it to go, and out of bounds is the call. 38 place 34. Adalola against Jenkins, Pinnock defending on the perimeter as well, Rockets in their matchup zone. as Afrikanov goes one-on-one -on -one and gets fouled by Pinnock and with the Rockets in the penalty that will be two shots or was the foul called on Jenkins? I don't know if I saw six. Mm -hmm. I thought it was on Reese Pinnock coming across and trying to get in front. Uh, just going to check this over I think. Anyway, two shots is the outcome, and uh, 
this is a chance to get it to a, a one possession game the first one is good and I think the referee's just going to have a quick word with him about stepping on the line for his free throw two from two as 38 plays 36 as Pinnock Super quick in transition, pitches to Powell. Powell for three, and thank goodness he made that one. Zach Powell drains the corner three. Yeah, great to see Zach make a three, because hopefully now that will get his eye in for maybe a couple of more. Spurrier does a good job defending one against one, shot clock winding down. And a foul is called, I'm not quite sure on who. It is indeed Jacob Spurrier. And we had the same angle, but two shots is the outcome. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not refereeing, so whatever well, we well, think doesn't really I don't matter. Know about, I don't know about unfortunately, I think yeah, probably that's fortunately. Enough, yeah. I've witnessed you refereeing, and it's uh, great. No, not what you were going to say? Average is what I was going to say. Oh, okay. I wasn't going to go too far one way or the other. Oh, Bailey's being told off again oh I I'm ready I'm, my my game day delegate uh, role which I haven't had to bring out for a while um, but yeah I think they're probably exchanging numbers looking to see if uh, the referee wants to have a quick trip to golf plex uh, one of our partners after the game anyway two shots to come Fast one is good. Afrikanov makes two from two and has made the last four free throws as the game is 41 to 38. Rockets getting some minutes out of youngster Jacob Spurrier. So Maynard looks to go inside but the ball's deflected and I don't know why Powell tried to save that and uncharacteristically Bode had a lot of off target then with his pass yeah good defensive deflection there from Thames Valley forcing the um, inside pass to Jake Spurrier to go up in the air which um, caused confusion for Zach Powell and tried to save it when it would have been his ball out of bounds Jenkins gets into the lane. Pinnock thought about the three. Still time on the shot clock. Pinnock with the throw back to Maynard. Maynard stop and pop is short on that one. And Pinnock really working hard on the offensive glass but can't get it. Ball for the Thames Valley Cavaliers. Yeah, nice patience there from the Rockets. Not taking the first shot. Waiting, coming off another ball screen, finding Elijah Maynard open. So Pinnock did a good job of defending the interior there. And now he's able to get it in transition. And he's able to slow it down. Jenkins thought about it, but he will go with this one. Lock two from Jemiah Jenkins. That's a gotta make shot, I think you'd say. Yeah, one of those are in transition, but you'd like Jemiah Jenkins taking them quite a lot. Good hands from Jacob Spurrier. Adalola got stripped by Spurrier. And out of bounds, eventually the Cool Rockets leading by five. And they've got some really positive minutes out of Jacob Spurrier in this quarter. Maynard to Powell. Powell, nothing going off the bounce. We'll play against Lewis to Maynard. Maynard for three. Boom! Elijah Maynard from downtown. Yeah, more great offense from the Rockets. Jamal Jenkins slowing it down, but then finding Elijah Maynard wide open. Adalolo drives and gets fouled. It will be two shots with Rockets in the penalty. It's such a, such a difficult matchup for anybody. Bode Adalolo got speed, skill, and really understands the game of basketball. That's three fouls. 
on Rhys Pinnock, I believe, or Jemiah Jenkins. Double check that right now. Yes, Jenkins now on three. Mitch Clark was sitting down with two fouls as well, as is Christian Alexander. So Coach Nurazade doing a pretty good job, I would say, managing his fouls going into the uh, second half as Adalola goes two from two. 46 plays 40. Quite a high-scoring affair once again here at the Valley. A couple of possessions remaining in this second quarter. Powell to Maynard, who hands off to round Powell gets the ball back seven seconds on the shot clock high screen and roll it's tough for Powell the step back three my goodness me Birmingham's finest with the three ball yeah some really really tough shots that have dropped for the Rockets the last couple of possessions but they didn't go in the first part of this quarter but they have in the second shot clock off for this last possession yeah, Rockets icing the pick and roll there and still have four seconds to play in transition. Powell, one of the quickest guys to Pinnock. And Pinnock gets fouled at the buzzer and two shots will come. There will be time back on the clock with this new rule. And the foul is called against Shaq Lewis. Okay, so The officials just checking with the table how much time will go back onto the clock. Pinnock with an audacious drive and dunk, dunk attempt there, gosh. Yeah, you'd love to see that confidence though, because Reese can definitely get up with the best of them. So to see him try and go over somebody is great. Absolutely. So just waiting for two shots to come. Uh, 86 of you now watching with us. Hopefully you're enjoying our coverage here live at the Valley as Pinnock makes the first to give the Rockets a 10-point advantage. And that's worked out very well for them, especially, as we said, with the, the foul trouble the Rockets are in. And Pinnock makes the second also, and that will probably do it, I would imagine, for the first half as Pinnock blocks Sto Stoikic and... Uh, it does indeed. Rockets with a 51-40 advantage after 20. And, uh, yeah, well, what do you make of that one, Jack? A, a pulsating game, really. Yeah, really, really good second quarter. Obviously missed the first one, but great shooting from both sides. Uh, two different strategies in terms of Thames Valley are definitely trying to attack the ring a little bit more and get to the basket and get some fouls, which has paid dividends in terms of personal fouls for quite a lot of uh, the Rockets players. And then Rockets are taking the shots that they're getting, which are quite often threes and deep twos, and they're making them at the moment. So, as you said, high scoring, 51-40 at the half. Yes, the Rockets, 11 from 17 from beyond the arc at 64%. Uh, that will definitely please Coach Nurizade, but the worry will be only two free throws for the Rockets and only 10 rebounds. They are losing the rebounding battle by 21 to 10. So that will be definitely something that Coach Nurizade and his team will be talking about during the halftime break. Let me give you the uh, the scorers for the game. Uh, Bodo Adelola leading all scorers in the game with 14 points. He's also got four rebounds and three assists to go with that. And he's played all 20 minutes. Uh, Shaq Lewis has nine points. And uh, AJ Roberts has seven. For the Rockets, Elijah Maynard with 13 points personal. Mitch Clark has eight, and then it's six fives and fours for Pinnock champion Alexander Jenkins round. And Powell, eight minutes played by Jacob Spurrier there, and that's some uh, really positive contribution. We will be back after the half-time interval. Um, join us again in about ten minutes' time. Um, and uh, yeah, we look forward to another great half of basketball here live at the Valley.
Welcome back. What a half time it's been. I've lost my co-commentator temporarily. I'm not entirely sure where he is. And in, a, in an incredible turn of events, Bailey the Boom Tus Tustin has been kicked off the mic by the officials. So it's all happening here at the Valley. However, it is 51-40 in favour of the Rockets. A, quite a high scoring affair. And they've had a bit of foul trouble to contend with, but they will start this third quarter with Mitch Clark, Reese Pinnock, Zach Powell, Elijah Maynard, and Christian Alexander, who returns to the game. And we are about 20 seconds from resuming the second half. And uh, it's been a really interesting battle, to be honest. Um, Thames Valley Cavaliers doing a great job on the offensive glass uh, with 11 offensive rebounds to uh, Reading Rockets. One, um, Elijah Maynard has been the, the main stalwart for the Rockets with 13 points personal. And the good news is Mr. Adams is reappearing. So he he's just in time for this second half and I'll wait for him to put his headset on as the Thames Valley Cavaliers will have the first possession of this third quarter and uh, Jack hope you had a nice half time break and uh, we've lost Bailey the Boom Tustin on the mic he's been he's been sacked has he been ejected he has oh great <laughs> anyway it's high low in, inside as doesn't the layup doesn't go it's Christian Alexander rebounds for the Rockets um, a big welcome to those of you who are just joining us in this second half. It's NBL Division 1 action between Reading Rockets and Thames Valley Cavaliers. Rockets currently fourth in the league as Clark pulls the trigger. Connects Mitch Clark with a clutch three to begin this third quarter. Yeah, not much more you can do there from Thames Valley. Really good contest, forcing a tough shot, but he simply makes it. Absolutely, Rockets icing the pick and roll. But Shaq Lewis is in the corner for three and he responds. And we say it often, that's the worst outcome for a coach. You make a three, give up a three. Clark to Alexander. Alexander will reverse to Powell and play pick and roll. Maynard to Clark, looking to go inside. Rockets can't find the interior just yet. Shot clock winding right down, Pinnock to Maynard, Maynard with the low pick up for three and Elijah Maynard picking up where he left off in the first half. What a way to start the third quarter, three made threes back to back to back. Yes, Rockets started with three threes in a row to start the game when you decided to not to be here. I won't keep making an issue of that as Stoich goes to the rack, can't get it to go. Rockets will rebound, they have a 14 point advantage. They've stretched it out. It's just slowing down the offense as Pinnock looks to play one against one, and that's just beautiful from Reese Pinnock. Great change of speed, and 
think what I love is goes aggressively against the big man for two. Yeah, slow isn't in Reese Pinnock's dictionary, is it? He doesn't know the word slow. Just attacks, which is great. Roberts pitches it back to Stoikic, doesn't get it to go, and that will be a Rockets ball. Um, does Reese Pinnock have a dictionary? That will be the, the question of the day. I'm sure he how, does. He's how, a very smart man. How boring do we sound? Or more me, sorry. This is cutting edge commentary. I don't it know what you're on about. Certainly is. It's like having David Attenborough with me. That was more due to the hair. Anyway, uh, Maynard hands off to Alexander. Alexander screen a roll with Pinnock. Pinnock will shoot and connect. Reese Pinnock has come to play in this second half as the Rockets lead by 19. Yeah, Coach Rob Banks has got to be thinking about a timeout with this hot start from the Rockets, just to just to cool it down a little bit. And another tough pull-up jumper doesn't go. It's that man again. Pinnock rebounds to Powell. Powell lays it in for two, and a timeout has been called, as you said, Jack, by Coach Robert Banks. His team trailing by 21, and it's been a blistering start to this third quarter by the Reading Rockets. Yeah, 13 points in three minutes is really really quick high scoring from the Rockets it certainly is and uh, as we say the Rockets continuing their hot streak they're 14 from 20 from beyond the arc they're shooting 70% that probably makes up for the 11 from 27 they were yesterday from the free throw line so they certainly have saved their best shooting uh, for today as uh, Elijah Maynard has moved on to 16 points personal and leads all scorers in the game. Reese Pinnock with 10 points, but uh, Reese Pinnock doing a great job, and it's great to see at both ends of the floor, Jack. Definitely. You know, you know you're going to get the defensive end of the game from Reese Pinnock. You know you're going to get really good ball pressure on the ball and really loud communication off the ball and really quick stunts and help side defence. But when he's playing great offence, it's, it's really great to watch and really fun to watch because it's just really good to see him because sometimes he's a bit one-sided one in terms of you know you're going to get the defence, but sometimes the offence is a little bit lacking, but great to see it today, and he deserves it for all the hard work he puts in. Deji Adekunle has subbed out the game as Roberts looks to play. Lewis hands off to Stokic. Screen and roll is just... Negated as Lewis has it in the high post, looks to play against Alexander. They're going to have to shoot as Rockets switch and do a good job on that. The pull-up jumper is short, and Rockets this time do rebound, much the relief of coach Nurizade. May not have thought about it in transition. Rockets moving the ball pretty well, looking to play inside with Adekunle out. Alexander will play again inside and Alexander will get it to go for two and that is what coach Nurizade has been asking of him just go to the rim and there's a stoppage in play for some reason not quite sure why I think you might be coming in as game day delegate oh, here. Oh, again, yes. At, at, that's fantastic. Let's see Let's see what the situation is. I think it might be to ask Bailey the Boom to leave, not sit in the stands. Gosh. Which will be great fun, I'm sure. This is getting exciting. Everybody's disappeared. I don't know what's happening. Well, we've got a break in play, how did the uh, women's game go? One point game. What a game it was. Oh, oh here comes Matt. The ref's going to speak with CEO Matt Johnson, who's just got off the phone. That's, that's a surprise. It's, it's become like a bit of a soap opera. So if you were tuning in to watch uh, Doctors or something like that, I don't know, Emmerdale. Emmerdale. I'm not going to say Coronation Street because I'm a big fan. OK. Um, so uh, we've got our very own soap here. This is... Uh, Fascinating, isn't it? I Emmerdale. want to know what's going on. So, another another issue with the courtside announce announcer, uh, and I think you might be right. I think he, I'm not sure if he has to leave the uh, arena or what, really. 
Um, well, let's wait and see. I just love oh, a bit no. of confusion. Don't now, you? We're, now we're going. We're playing. How exciting. Good. Well, I'm, I'm sure you'll have thoroughly enjoyed that interlude there, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, the, the, the ball game is back. As Adalola has it, he'll play the screen and roll. And pick to the opposite side for the step up pick. Can't off pitches to Lewis. Lewis will fire the three. He's off. And Powell comes up with the rebound. As Rockets looking to play through the inside. Screen and roll between Clark and Alexander. And Clark with a great change of speed, and he does that really well. Can't quite get it to go at the rim, but will go to the line for two shots. I thought I was giving you a chance to say something positive about Mitch Clark. Well, not much to say really, is there? Well, you live with him. Yeah, I know. Now, we'll quantify that okay. as a member of staff. <laughs> Clark at the line is good on the first. Rockets with a 23-point advantage make that 24. And they've really come out in this second half and uh, turned up the heat on the Thames Valley Cavaliers. I mean, he's got a lot to live up to after his start yesterday. 13 points in one quarter. Great going. The man from down under, two from two, 68 plays 43. Rockets have switched pretty well so far. Alexander defending on the perimeter. The switch is there with shot clock winding down. Alexander does a great job defending to be to his credit. Passes to Pinnock, Pinnock to Powell. Powell to Maynard, Maynard for three. Thank you! Elijah Maynard almost stretches this game to 30 points. 71 plays 43 and it's an incredible shooting outing from the Rockets. Yeah, really hot start to the quarter. Um, well, to the half actually for the Rockets, but great defense is what's led to that one from Christian Alexander on the switch. Adelolo drives, but stolen by Clark. And it looks like the Thames Valley Cavaliers are going to have to call timeout again. Clark playing against Adelolo, who battles no matter what. And the throwback to Maynard is no good, but a timeout has indeed been called by. The Thames Valley Cavaliers head coach Robert Banks and his team are trailing by 28 points. 4.30 remaining in this third quarter, Jack. Yeah, very early for coach Rob Banks to take his second time out of the half, but I think it was needed. The run, the run was still going for the Rockets, and I think it's kind of now or never for, for the Thames Valley Cavaliers. Indeed, and let's uh, let's update you on the uh, leading scorers in the game because Elijah Maynard has moved on to 19 points personal. Mitch Clark has 13 and Reese Pinnock with 10. They're leading the Rockets, who are shooting 15 from 21 from beyond the arc. That is uh, some serious numbers from the Rockets. Uh, Boda Adalola has got 14 points for his team and Shaq Lewis has 12. And the rebound game is certainly favouring the Rockets in this second half. They have their biggest lead of the ball game, and they are leading this quarter, Jack, 20 to three. As you say, an incredible opening start to this third quarter. They've shot the ball really well, but I think the thing that's doing it for me is that is the defense has been amazing. The defense has been really good on switches, everything. They've just got down, kept their man in front of them, not trying to get steals, but the steals have come from bad passes after the really good on-ball defence, which is leading to better shots in transition. Most definitely, and that's certainly something that Coach Nurizade has been preaching to his players, giving up 40 points in the first half, but have really sat down to defenders. Jacob Spurry is into the game, high screen a roll, and that will be a foul on the play. And I think it should be, and one, it should be. It should be, let's have a look. Oh, they're saying before, I think. No basket. This. That's an interesting call. Well, I'm not commenting. I'm commentating, not commenting. I will comment because I know Dan Cox, the referee, pretty well. I think oh. he's made a mistake there. Oh, referee friend. Brilliant. That's really good. Good to know. Anyway, he's out of bounds as Clark fires the jumper and connects, and Mitch Clark has the hot hand for the Rockets as they lead by 30. 
Mitch gets the two points anyway, so it doesn't matter what the call was. Great pass inside from AJ Roberts to Igor Stokic for two. And that stops the rock for TVC. I don't think we mentioned Jacob Spurrier back into the game for the Rockets out of that timeout as Reese Pinnock gets a free. No, he doesn't. I thought he was going to hit that then. Pinnock long on the three ball attempt as Roberts looking to take this Thames Valley offense by the scruff of the neck. Works hard, goes off the window for two. AJ <laughs> Roberts is tough. That's for sure. 73 plays 47. Rockets still doing a good job. And AJ Roberts is called for the foul, I think, on the screen action. That's number three for him. We've had our first comment. Chris Sharples has given us the fire emoji and Amazing. the meteor. And uh, that's absolutely right. The Rockets certainly showing that as Clark. Really under control, really well poised. We'll play high screen and roll with Spurrier with five seconds on the shot clock. Clark fades away, just can't get it to go, but Spurrier in there amongst the rebound, and it's a Rockets ball on the baseline. Yeah, great hustle there from Jacob. He's not going to get the rebound for it, but Christian. has done really well in that minute or two that he's been on. Yeah, and that's just that's testament to him, isn't it? Because he's come into the game, just spelled Christian Alexander, done a really good job there, and allowed Alexander to get some, some rest. Clark to Pinnock for three. Yes! Reese Pinnock, three ball. Rockets by 29. I was kind of expecting this shooting to go downhill in the second half because of how hot it was in the first, but the fact that they've managed to keep this going is really impressive. Ergun Koya looked to respond, but he was short on the three ball. The Rockets will come again, leading the ball game 76 to, four, to 47 as a foul is called on the play. And that's called against Shaq Lewis. And I think that is foul number two for him. Foul count so far this quarter is four to zero. Shows that how good the defense from the Rockets has been. Clark was feeling it, but is short on the three-point attempt. I think Coach Nerizade won't mind that one bit as Adelola plays with Ogun Koya, who shoots the early one, which it frustrates the Thames Valley Cavaliers coaching staff. Pinnock, Alexander reversing to Clark. Clark's thinking about it. Clark going off the bounce. Good poise from Mitch Clark. Maynard. Clark will fire the pull-up jumper, no good. Rockets putting a little bit of heat on the offensive glass, which gives Shaq Lewis a dunk in transition, which is no good. Back rims that one. Pin uh, Clark to Pinnock, Pinnock blows the layup. Very fast pace, Adalola in transition, gets it to go for two. End-to-end -end stuff. Is what I think I need to say about that couple yes, of possessions. Very much so. So Rockets taking a little bit more time on this possession. Champion sort of half back up there, gets bumped by Adalola, but nothing doing, and out of bounds is the call as Isaac Round will check back into the game in place of Mitch Clark. And my goodness me, Mitch Clark has been uh, fabulous in this third quarter he has 15 points and three assists doing a great job for his team who are leading this one by 27 Lewis to Stokic inside and that's a nice pass and but nothing doing there Another miss layup there by Adekunle Alexander has AJ Roberts on him, but won't play. Yeah, interesting decision there. I think Samet Rosado is not very happy with that one. Champion goes off the bounce, goes off the window, no good. Transition again for TVC. And blocked by Pinnock. What a block from Reese Pinnock. The three ball is short. 
Rockets can't get it. It's another offensive rebound by the Cavaliers. Pinnock is everywhere trying to steal that one. Adalola goes off the bounce. And he'll go against Alexander, but no good. The shot clock's still winding down. Layup, no good. It's another offensive rebound. No, it is a foul on the play. And it looks like Isaac Round will be charged with that one. And it's become a bit frantic here. Yeah, great defence from the Rockets, being able to stop a few, few attempts at the basket and a few shots, but just can't finish the defensive possession with a rebound and had to keep playing. But Reese Pennant gets a well-earned rest there. Absolutely, Flip Jenkins has checked in and uh, Jacob Spurrier will come back in for this possession. And he's uh, certainly, and his, uh, and his keepers, uh, a smart play from Roberts going against the mismatch in size against Jenkins and that will be a foul on the Rockets number six. Surely not discussing unsportsmanlike, it's just <laughs> it should be just a normal basketball foul. White has foul number four for Jenkins. So two shots to come for AJ Roberts. Who's having a little chat with Lewis Champion? Oh, oh no, he's having a chat with Flip Jenkins, and and that's a, there's going to be a technical foul for both players. So that means Jamai Jenkins has fouled out of the game. So that's frustrating for Coach Nurazade. That will put Zach Powell into the game. Uh, I believe the two technical fouls cancel each other out, so we will go back to the original call. Yeah which was indeed two shots to AJ Roberts, who which is now on four fouls himself. Apologies. I was going to say both of those things, and you cut me off on both of them, but great commentating, Ben. On knows exactly what's going on before it's even happened. I'm not sure about that. My, my mind-reading skills are not very good. My memory skills are not very good either at the minute. So AJ Roberts goes two from two and will come out of the game and be replaced by Afrikanov for this final 20 seconds. Rockets with a 25-point advantage. And Mitch Clark will come back in. Coach Nurazade realising just one offensive possession left, and Mitch Clark obviously one of the Rockets' leading players on offence. So Spurrier hands off to Round. Plays his screen roll with Spurrier. Round gets fouled on the play, and that will be two shots to come. So with the break in play, you asked me about my research that I've done for Thames Valley. Yes. Number 11 for Thames Valley, who is Omon Afrikanov, yeah. had a contract in Europe this season that fell through, which is why he's playing for Thames Valley in Italy. So he's a very, very talented young player. Uh, third year at CBL at Crest Academy. Certainly is. Round goes two from two. And Pinnock's coming back in for Clark. That's that offense defense that Coach Nurizade likes to go to. 78 plays 51. Four seconds remaining, and a foul is called on Isaac Round. And followed instructions right to the letter there. Rockets with fouls to give, so just taking any downhill advantage out of play. And I've also just noticed our videographer, Chris Fellows, has taken over commentary duties from Bailey the Boom. The ball looks still to be in the hand there, but as it is, it missed, and that will do us for the third quarter. The Rockets with a fantastic quarter. It's 27 to 11 in that quarter. Uh, give us your thoughts on that one. Um, I think, yeah, obviously the, the hot start to the quarter from the Rockets in the first three or four minutes was incredible. Shooting was great, um, but defence was the really important thing, as I said, that I thought was kind of the difference maker, getting a few stops, getting a few easy ones in transition, but also the second, the secondary fast break, sorry, um, and getting open freeze, which is great to see. So let's give you some statistics at the end of that third quarter for the Rockets. Elijah Maynard leading with 19 points personal. He's shooting 71% from beyond the arc and 70% from the field. Mitch Clark, excuse me, Mitch Clark has 15 points personal. He's three from five from three. 
And Reese Pinnock, three from four from three, shooting really well this evening, has 13 points together with five assists. Bodad Alona leading his team with 16. Shaq Lewis has 12. And AJ Roberts with 11. The Rockets still on the deficit of the rebound game. 30 to 21. But they have led by as many as 30 and currently have a 27-point advantage going into this fourth and final quarter. So unless something goes disastrously wrong, you feel the Rockets should be able to close this game out, Jack. Yeah, definitely. I think I would be saying to the guys now that defence is going to win this game if they stop. If they stop uh, Thames Valley getting to 78, they win the game, right? It doesn't matter what they do on the offensive end, it's just defensive now for me. Obviously, the offense will come with how talented this squad is, but yeah, defense is the key to winning this game. Indeed, in 11 points, they held their opponents too, as the Rockets will get us restarted for this fourth and final quarter. Remember, we are in action every single Sunday in March with the Rockets playing at home to finish the season. A little bit of zone for the Cavaliers as Alexander goes from the high post one-on-one -on -one and you love to see that from your five-man. Yeah, great take. I know that's something Samit Narazade has really been asking Christian to do is attack the basket stronger. Well Stoikic. on offense. Sorry, Jack Stoikic can't get it to go. And Rockets will play in transition. Round pulls up very early. I think got a deflection on that shot. Rockets still icing the screen and roll. And out of bounds is the call, deflected out of bounds by Isaac Round. Sideline ball as Timmy Ogun Koya comes back in. The Rockets faithful shouting, let's go Rockets, let's go. They've been treated to a wonderful shooting display by the home team. Lewis goes against Clark, Clark puts his body in the way. And gets called for a foul. Tough one, that one. Yeah, another tough one. I think Mitch nearly got across, if not got across, but great drive from Chuck Lewis. Indeed, and AJ Roberts is checked back into the game after his brief rest. Two shots is the outcome for Shaq Lewis. First one's good. Shaq Lewis shooting the ball pretty well this year. He's actually shooting 55% from the three-point line. Not entirely sure how many threes, though, as Powell, with the rear range, doesn't get it to go. 80 plays 52. Lob pass inside is good, and the layup for two. Uh, backside help from the Rockets was a little late there. Yeah, it was nearly picked off from Isaac Round, but as you said, a little bit late and couldn't quite get there in time on the help side from the front of the post. Clark, under contact, can't get it to go. Rockets playing a little bit direct at the moment, which is giving Thames Valley some transition scores. And as we say that, Coach Nurazade has called timeout. And I'm sure we'll be discussing that as TVC have opened this game, opened this quarter, should I say. Five to two. Yeah, good start there from Thames Valley, I'm sure. Coach Robert Banks will be pretty happy with that and just kind of telling these guys, great, let's force Rockets into using another timeout. Let's keep going, keep going, but defence and transition is kind of what's working for them at the moment. So lots of games during this period of March, Jack. Um, just before you talk to us about your uh, Rockets team, uh, congratulations on your, your first win with Bucks University uh, yes. a couple of weeks ago over... Um, gold, goldsmith, goldsmith. So yes. that, that's good. Uh, how did that go? 
yeah, it's been it's been a challenging year this year, kind of building the foundations and hopefully trying to build something for the coming years. I think it's been it's been a slow process, but yeah, that first win is really really great. Uh, I think it's even more rewarding when you get one late in the season and that's your first. Um, managed to keep us in the league, which is great, obviously for next year and hopefully new recruits coming in. And as I said, I think as soon as we get those first couple of people through the door, I think we can really build something special there because the university are really behind us and what we're doing at Rockets, which is great to see. So shot clock winding down as we've resumed. Clark will play against Adalola, but it's deflected. Four seconds with Maynard. Maynard to Pinnock. It looks like they're going to run out of time. Pinnock manages to get a shot away and a turnover has been made by TVC as Champion thinks about it. Shot fakes to the corner to Pinnock. Back to Champion. Yeah, loads of time here on the shot clock still for the Rockets. Champion still 10 seconds. Looking to play one against one. Maynard will fire the three. Bingo, Elijah Maynard! Another three as Maynard is six from eight from beyond the arc. He is shooting the lights out. Yeah, great to see Eli uh, shooting well. He was in a really good mood this morning at community sessions. I was coaching with him at 9 a.m. this oh, morning. Oh, that's what it must have been then. With little under fives and he was in a great mood. I could tell he was ready for this one. So what you're saying is your company has allowed him to shoot the ball well. Is that what I'm hearing? No, that's not what you're hearing. What I'm saying is he was just in a good mood and I felt like it was going to be a really good day for him. Yeah, it's all under interpretation. Anyway, <laughs> it's good to see for sure. Elijah Maynard doing it on and off the floor as Adelolo plays against Pinnock. Afrikanov will play against Clark. Adelolo for three. Connects and Bode Adelolo with Reese Pinnock right there. Makes the three ball. Yeah, again, another great contest from Reese. You can't ask much more of that if you're coach Samit Nurazade. And Alexander gets it to go inside for two, and that's probably much, been much needed in terms of that inside-outside game that coach Nurazade likes. Roberts for three is off on that one. Maynard goes to the Stars to rebound. And uh, Rockets playing in transition. It's Clark for three, but he's off. Alexander keeping it alive. Good play by the Rockets as they lead this one 85-59. Champion, Clark to Pinnock. Pinnock under pressure, doesn't get it to go. Arguably could have shot that one, but chose to drive. Game has sped up somewhat in these last few minutes. Turnaround jumper is short from Stokic. And Coach Nurazade just asking for a little bit of poise on offense with six minutes remaining in the ball game. Champion to Clark. Clark goes off the bounce to the rack. Can't get it to go heavy on his finish there. And TVC playing in transition again. The layup doesn't go. Stoikic is blocked by Alexander, who says no. Yeah, I think Mitch, Clark, Mitch Clark's shot the ball really well today. Hasn't finished too well under pressure around the basket. But Christian Alexander, probably one of the better games I've seen him have this season, um, doing it at both ends. We know he could, we know he's a great athlete for his size, but to see him playing with real aggression, attacking the basket, and obviously on defensive. Uh, blocking shots there which is great to see because if you can have that I think it really is an anchor for your team Mark Halewood has, uh, is listening which is fabulous has said haven't seen a pairing like this since Fish and Halewood last year Mark we miss you but Mr Adams is doing a fine job as well as well as could be expected tough shoes to fill Mark Halewood <laughs> Most definitely. That's foul number four on Mitch Clark there. He stays in the game as Roberts looks to pass inside but can't get it to go and out of bounds is the call. And 85 plays 59 as Elijah Maynard will come into the game for Mitch Clark. And will take a well-deserved rest and with Maynard shooting the ball like he is, that's, that's a pretty good sub for the Rockets. 
Yeah, when you've got Eli shooting the ball this well, it's hard to keep him off the floor because he just offers something completely different as a four-man for us this year. Good patience from Alexander. Kicks it to Pinnock, and it's another three. Pinnock four from five. Eight. I'm speechless. 88 plays 59. Lewis with the turnaround jumper doesn't go. Pinnock tips it to round, and round will play in transition. Hands off to Champion. That's that cross screen, T screen. And a foul has been called against. Bode Adalola. I think that would have been a yellow card in football for that trip. Yeah, you'd think so. He's also having a having a word with Isaac round about about a few things, shall we say. The 34-year-old against the 19-year-old. Anyway, a timeout has been called and it's uh, coach Robert Banks' final timeout with four minutes and 44 seconds remaining. His team are trailing by 29 points, 88 plays 59. It looks as though it will take the Rockets to it, uh, 13 wins and six losses as my NBL Division 1 table refreshes. Um, yeah, it should indeed do that, and they will be just a game ahead of Newcastle University, who have 12 wins and six losses. And uh, the league is, is pretty tight. It looks like uh, kind of the top two, Essex Rebels losing last night. Um, yeah, great win from City of Birmingham. Absolutely. City of Birmingham really clinging on to hopes of getting that eighth and final playoff spot and it looks like that's it's between the hoods the the city of birmingham rockets the thunder and the Cavs. Um, interesting one it looks like the loughborough riders and bradford dragons are going to be sort of in that mid-table bit but they're still in the hunt for a top four play so really exciting start a really exciting um end to this season jack yeah it's been really good this year because it's one of those years where almost anybody can beat everybody anybody so Alexander plays inside and gets fouled on the play. Two shots will be the outcome for that. And it's good to see Christian Alexander being effective around the rim. He has 10 points this evening in 21 minutes, which is a better outing. How many rebounds does he have as well, Ben? Because I've not got the live stats up. Five rebounds. Okay. Missed the first free throw. I was wondering if he was close to a double-double, but not quite. But yeah, as I was saying with the league, it's great just because anybody can beat anybody. So obviously we've briefly discussed Birmingham uh, beating Essex away from home yesterday, which you wouldn't have thought would be the case, but it seemed relatively comfortable looking at the score. Um, so yeah, no massive front runner in terms of last year, obviously with Hemelstorm, a few years previous with Kestrels, kind of the teams that go undefeated or near nearly, but a few teams at the top of the table have been really strong this season. And really good defence by the Rockets, but a foul is called on the play. Rhys Pinnock's charged with that one. That's foul number one for him. Uh, Rockets doing a, a fabulous job, really protecting their paint on that possession. 89 plays 59 with four minutes and 23 away from the end of this one. Igor Stokic pulls up, shoots, but is finds the back of the iron, should I say, on that one. Champion will play screen and roll with Alexander. Pitches back to Pinnock. Pinnock thought about it. Pinnock to Alexander. I'm <laughs> not quite sure what happened there. Maynard for three. Oh, he's just missed it. Pinnock gets the rebound and puts it in for two. And the Rockets with their biggest lead of the game at 32. Yeah, this is the great thing. When Reese is shooting the ball well, people have to get out and close him out on a long closeout, which then means he can attack with his speed. And yeah, I think he was. <laughs> I think him and Chris Alexander weren't quite on the same wavelength there with the alley oop, but. Oh, and look, look, look like a travel, anyway. and, and it's been called. Yes, is a travel, sorry. So Jacob Spurrier will check back into the game in place of Christian Alexander. It's been great to see Spurrier get some, uh, get some burn in this particular game, and he's done a good job. Three minutes 40 remaining in the game. Yeah, it just shows how deep this Rockets bench is. Jacob Spurrier, who rarely gets minutes in this D1 side, has come in and done a really good job when he has been on court today. So Pinnock playing downhill, 
to Spurrier. Yes! Jacob Spurrier with the lap and sends the crowd wild! Yeah, and you can see the big smile on his face as he comes back down the court, which is amazing to see. Oh, and a foul called on Adalola as he plays downhill. And a foul is called on Lewis Champion. 93 plays 59, and it's that man, the sharpshooter, Harry Milbank, who's checking into the game. Milbank, who has been out injured for a while, back into the Division 3 fold yesterday as he helped his team to a 91-67 victory. Great to see Harry Milbank on the court as Adalola makes the first and gets his team to 60. Two from two as uh, Amon Afrikanov will come back into the game for his team. 93 play 61 with three minutes and change away from the conclusion of this game. Yeah, as you said, great to see Harry Milbank back in. Great shooter, but also a really tough on-ball defender. Three EABL players on the court for the Reading Rockets. Pinnock playing screen and roll with Spurrier, forces a switch. Maynard with the shot clock winding down. That's a tough one. Oh, my goodness! Elijah Maynard with another triple. Yeah, just not much to say. Again, good defence from Chuck Lewis. <laughs> he looked over at coach Rob Banks and went, what else can I do? I had my hand in his face. But a great shot again from Elijah Maynard. I thought they were going to go for the alley-oop there for Sergio Adekunle. Uh, Rockets doing a great job icing the ball screen there. 96 plays 61. I'm sure the Rockets crowd will be hunting that 100-point target. As Milbank chases Afrikanov off the down screen and it's a turnover, two on one. Round off the window for two and the Rockets have 98. And it's a great feeling here in the valley. Yeah, I think this is just a great advert. If you haven't been down to Loddon Valley yet and you're in the local area, you need to get down here because more often than not, you're getting a really high-scoring, entertaining game. A nice pass inside, but it doesn't go. What I love is Coach Nurizade coaching super hard with this group. Pinnock fires the three in transition. Oh, my! Reese Pinnock for three. The hundreds up. It's all going on. The Rockets are 20 from 30 from beyond the arc. And good hands from Isaac Round there on defence, knocking it away from AJ Roberts. And Zach Powell subs back in for Reese Pinnock. And Bode Adelona's still talking to Reese Pinnock on his way out, which is interesting. Reese Pinnock, who shot five from six from beyond the arc. And a stop from Jacob Spurrier, and these guys are still giving it everything they've got which is amazing to see. Rockets with a 40-point advantage with 1.46 left in the ball game. Reese Pinnock has sat down after 29 minutes, shooting five from six from beyond the arc with 21 points personal. Rockets, as I say, shoot 20 from 30 from downtown. As Round has it, he will play high screen and roll with Spurrier. And Round is called for a carry. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I've, I've, I had a feeling Bode Adalola here is trying to start something. He's knocking the ball away, talking to people. Went down 40 is an interesting move, but the veteran. Veteran play, that's veteran. all it is. As we know, Bode Adalola, fantastic advocate for NBL Division One basketball. So we're approaching, we're under 90 seconds now as Adalola comes off the ball screen and goes against Spurrier, can't get it to go. Ball is tipped to round. Powell has it. As I said, Rockets with a 40-point advantage, 101 place, 61. They have shot the absolute lights out this evening as Maynard. Contested pull-up is short. And Isaac Round fouls in transition, but the Rockets are indeed in the bonus, so in the penalty, sorry, so that will be two shots to Adalola. As Ibrahim Jafaru checks into the game for the first time this evening. We're under the minute mark. First free throw is good. 
these fans also don't think this game's over. They're, they're still giving it everything they've got. The Rockets fans, they love it, that's for sure. Uh, don't forget, it's a big one here at the Valley next Sunday, the 10th of March, as the Reading Rockets entertain the Hemel Storm, who have bolstered their squad with the signing of Taylor Johnson. And that will be an intriguing encounter. And Darian Maynard Nelson. for three. Got them all! Elijah Maynard! The shooting doesn't stop! I was also just about to add that Hemel have also signed Darian Nelson Henry, who's had a few seasons in the BBL with Leicester Riders and been a really good player at that level. So Elijah Maynard has 28 points personal shooting, 8 from 10 from 3. What an incredible outing. Powell will probably dribble it out, but he's got to play because there's a difference between shot and game clock. Maynard again for three. He is off on that one. He got a bit of a heat check, and that will do us. It's a comprehensive victory for the Reading Rockets. They see this one out, winning by 104 points to 63, and shooting 21 from 31 from beyond the arc. An incredible shooting clinic by the Rockets and catch your breath what do you make of that one Jack I mean yeah it's just it was unbelievable shooting from the Rockets but to keep a team of Thames Valley's level with the vector experience they've got to 63 shows what a great job they did on the defensive end as well well yes 23 points they held their opponents to in the second half and you were right when you were commenting about the fact that the, the Rockets were defending a lot lot better in that third quarter the third quarter 27-11 and the fourth quarter 26-12 um, really showed that the Rockets had great intent to the defense yeah. great intent at the defensive end Let, let's give you some of the statistics for the game Bodo had a load of finished with 30 sorry finished with 23 points he had four rebounds and three assists did great job for his team Shaq Lewis had 15 points and four rebounds and AJ Roberts with 11.6 rebounds. Igor Stokic, four points but 10 rebounds, and he was the main rebounder for the Thames Valley Cavaliers. And for the Rockets, player of the game can only be one person, Elijah Maynard with 28 points personal, shooting 10 from 16 from the field, which included eight from 12 in the end from the three-point line, with seven rebounds to go with us, one assist. And Reese Pinnock had 21 points personal shooting, five from six from the three-point line, three rebounds and seven assists. And he was supported by Mitch Clark, who had 15 points on a three of six from the three-point line shooting, three rebounds and three assists. And we will see if we can get the main man, Elijah Maynard. And Jack's going to toddle off and uh, see I'll if, run off and see if I can see, grab see if get it. Just leave your headphones there. See if we can get Maynard for uh, a quick interview. And uh, as, as I said, a reminder that the Rockets are in action next Sunday, the 10th of March. Their host, the Hemel Storm. They were victorious by eight points away from home. Let's see if they can uh, do the double over a team who were unbeaten last year. And uh, hopefully, I, I think we can see the MVP of this evening has just put I'm talking in, to you. Who just am I put, talking to? He's talking to me. Oh. Hello, he's on. He's on. Elijah Maynard joins us live post game. Elijah, 28 points personal, shooting eight from 12 from beyond the arc. Finally. How do you feel about that one? I oh, feel good, man. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming. Um, just my teammates trusting in me. I just appreciate that they did that, and it was falling today. Finally. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, two wins for the Rockets over this weekend. Uh, and we haven't got to speak to you this much, uh, uh, a lot this uh, season. How do you feel the season's going so far? And uh, how do you feel with the last five games coming up? The last five games are very important, especially uh, next week against Hemel and then the following week against Newcastle. Um, three, four, and five right, are like really close, I think, between two or one game. So it's very important that we uh, pull through those wins. Um, so far, the season's been pretty good. Um, we just got to trust each other, and I think we're starting to do that now, starting to buy in, which is good. Awesome. And uh, life in Reading, 
how's that been over the last six months? It's different, but, you know, I like it. I enjoy it. I like going to new places, finding food to eat and stuff like that, so I love it. Fantastic. And the Rockets, obviously, uh, with a 40-point victory. What changed at halftime for you guys? Because we were the Rockets were only up 11 at half. Defense. Uh, Sam had got into us and told us that we just had to play, take pride into defense. Offense was already looking good, so we just had to take pride into defense. So two halves of holding uh, Thames Valley Cavaliers in the second half to 23 points and holding London Elite to 23 points in the first half yesterday. In terms of, in terms of your defense, what do you think has changed over the last couple of weeks for this group? Intensity. Um, even locating shooters as well, too, and then help side. We've been in practice taking pride into our help side defense, too. Awesome. And finally, your hopes for this season. Rockets now move to 13-6, and six, cementing that fourth place in NBL Division 1. What are your hopes for the remainder of the season? Oh, win it all, baby. Got to win it all. <laughs> Absolutely. Playoffs, here we come. Yep. Well, Elijah Maynard, thank you so much for joining us. 28 points and seven rebounds. Great thank outing. Thank and uh, we will see you next week when we take on the Hemel Storm. Yes, sir. Thank you. Great stuff. Great to have Elijah Maynard with us. And uh, just some final thoughts there, Jack. Elijah obviously really pleased he was managing to make his shots drop this evening, 8 from 12 from beyond the arc. But uh, your final thoughts on this particular game? Yeah, I think in terms of Coach Summit and Rosado, obviously he'll be very happy with the result. But I think he'll be more happy with the defence rather than the offence because you're going to have nights like that where you shoot well, but some nights you won't. But defense can be consistent and if you can keep teams to 63 points you're going to be in a chance of winning every time out so I think that's the real big thing that I think coach Samet and the team and everybody that's involved with Rockets will take from this game it shows how good this team is defensively as well so double tonight for the Reading Rockets they gained two victories over the weekend 72-66 against London League and a magnificent performance 104-63 tonight against the Thames Valley Cavaliers thank you so much for joining us this evening it's been an absolute pleasure Jack thank you very much no worries. for thank checking you for in me. and we will see you next week uh, when the Reading Rockets take on Hemel Storm but for now enjoy the rest of your weekend it's a Rockets double delight